instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Happy Thursday there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Primary, Senate candidates, baby formula shortages. Oh my, yes. It's all that in on today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. But first... I want to give a shout out to today's awesome episode sponsor, and that is the Expat Money Summit 2022, sponsored by, yes, the one, the only, Mikkel Thorat from the Expat Money Show. Head over to briannicholsshow.com forward slash expat, where you can grab your free tickets for this virtual summit that will take place November 7th through November 11th. Five days, 30 ex- expert speakers. Join us at briannicholsshow.com forward slash expat folks yes I, I mentioned it there at the intro got a lot on the plate today and i can't break it down myself returning to the program he tends to have some concerns and i'm sure he's going to share them with us today uh, a regular on cody's concerns kenny cody welcome back to the brian nichols show hey brian how are you brother doing good my friend how are you i'm doing great i'm doing great we're rounding out the school year tomorrow's the last day of school then then we're going to be uh, out for the summer and i'm sure all the kids are glad but the teachers are also glad too so I'm i was going to say i'm sure the teachers are quite as glad just as much as the kids are if anything 100 percent aligned on, on the on the end vacation break well hey let's uh let's dig right into the the thick of things folks are familiar with you and the the, the uh, you and the audience uh and if not folks please go check out kenny on the uh, the program we've had him here many a time so uh, all you have to do is click your artwork and your podcast catcher if you're listening to the audio version it'll bring you right to today's episode you can go ahead and find all other episodes that kenny's been on uh, and on his user profile there as a, a speaker a guest on our show so um yeah with that being said though we have a couple of big topics to dig into uh and one of them is kind of a recurring conversation from our last time you were on the show we were talking about the rise of a conservative uh what was it conservative uh help me with the word celebrity conservatism is that what it was yeah. thank you yeah I was, I was like i knew it's popularity or something like that yeah celebrity conservatism and we talked about herschel walker and then also dr um uh, mehmet oz who is running for u.s senate in pennsylvania well we just had our primary here back on tuesday and uh phew, Kenny, uh, not only is it a very hotly contested primary, last I saw, they're within a couple thousand votes of each other. Uh, Mehmet uh, Oz and then the uh, runner who he's facing against is uh, McCormick. I forget his uh, first name. Help me out there. Dave McCormick. Dave McCormick. Yes, thank you. Uh, I know Wall Street uh, CEO there. So talk to us. Uh, what What's going on up in Pennsylvania with this GOP primary race? One of the closest Senate races that I've ever seen. It's actually quite fascinating. So Memonalis, I think, is ahead by around 1,270 votes, somewhere around there, in a, I think, seven-person primary. So he's up by 0.1% of the vote. So this is pretty much going to go to a, uh, a recount because, they, you know, Pennsylvania has a law that uh, any, uh, any election that is 0.5 percentage points or under has to go through a, a recount. So we're going to see a recount from this, of course. There's only 1% of the vote remaining. I think it's around 17,000 ballots. And of course, these are the mail-in ballots that have been so controversial over the last few years. Um, but uh, really interesting. I, mean, I think that a lot of people put a lot of stock into people like Kathy Barnett, who's going to end up in a solid third place, actually decent third place from uh, both Oz and McCormick. Um, you know, a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of people at the McCormick campaign themselves um, wants to see fail um and i and of course i've talked about it before you know i'm not really a, a huge fan of mccormick i think mccormick is, is a neocon he is a said he would support bob nominees said he would support pro china trade policy just a lot of things that a lot of uh, conservatives like me and a lot of conservative libertarians like me disagree with you know i'm really I said it on this months ago and i think all is somebody that's very similar to trump in that i think that he is a blank slate he is a random Center in America first campaign in our country, uh, Senate and Congress. Um, has a deal back in America, people uh, working for his campaign. I think he'll be a, as good of a senator as Pennsylvania being a swing state can produce. Um, so I'm hoping he pulls it out here. He like he will likely, but we probably won't know the actual results of the election. We'll probably have some predictions and things like that uh, for the end of the week, but we won't know the actual results probably until the recount is done. Um, but I'm hoping. Oz pulled a victory here. Uh, about a huge issue. Um, I think Oz is done. 
All right. Well, and Kenny, by the way, we're having a little bit of mic issues there. So maybe you just pull your camera a little bit closer just to be safe. Um, but uh, no, 100% right now in terms of where, where this campaign is, it's it's very close. It's it's very difficult to see where it's going to be headed. And uh, you know, I know Trump is already, you, I think you, you were mentioning there, the mail-in ballots, right? Trump's already towing, towing in a little yeah. bit saying, uh, you know, fake news, that the ballots are, are rigged, uh, which, I mean, you look at what's happening in PA, it is interesting, the conversation, because if you go to the guber- gubernatorial side, Masterino, um, it looks like he's going to be the GOP candidate. And he's basically, uh, from what I've seen, he said he will not approve any Democratic electors uh, for the 2024 presidential nom- uh, election if, if he is, ele- in fact, elected governor, um, because he firmly believes that the mail-in ballot uh, that was pushed in through the past uh, election here during COVID, that that was completely unconstitutional. So it's going to set up a very interesting situation there where you're going to have a lot of a lot, a lot of schism taking place in the Keystone State, Kenny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Mas- Mastriano is probably um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a more of a right candidate than Oz or McCorm- McCormick would be. Probably the, the Pennsylvania scene in a long time. You know, Lou Beretta was more of a libertarian and maybe the more the moderate in that uh, gubernatorial race. Um, but I think he'll still be fine. I think, you know, I mean, I, I think it's still a toss up for governor. Um, you know, Mastriano is. You know, decorated war veteran is a uh, you know has has been a political activist and an author for a very long time. You know, I I, th- I think he still has a pretty good chance, and I think that whoever wins the Senate primary has a pretty good chance against John Fetterman. You know, Fetterman's been under scrutiny for a long time of being sort of a far right progressive, a far I'm sorry, a far left progressive, a far left populist. Uh, not very that that popular with the modern day and uh, the modern day Pennsylvanians. You know, that that have always been pretty moderate themselves. Have always been pretty middle of the road. As you can tell, with a lot of their um, a lot of their presidential winners and a lot of their senators, you know, like people like Pat Timmy, who's actually retiring and getting replaced by Fetterman or Oz or McCormick. Um, so I'm really interested to see how the swing state is affected. You know, I think somebody like Oz or McCormick can keep the seat red, um, and that's what we need to see. I would love for uh, the Republicans to take back a gubernatorial seat. I think that would be fantastic, but it's. It's going to be difficult, I think, um, for the Democrats to gain momentum. I mean, I, you know, if there's somebody like Connor Lamb, you know, that uh, John Fetterman beat in the Democrat primary, I think that'd be a lot different. Um, Lamb is a lot more of a moderate, uh, moderate Democrat, sort of a union Democrat that, uh, that, of course, attaches on to the factory workers of Pennsylvania. But somebody like Fetterman who has been a progressive for a long period of time, you know, for pretty much all his career, he's never been an establishment politician. And, you know, unfortunately or fortunately for however you want to, um, however you want to phrase it, he has been a pretty controversial and pretty, you know, controversial figure, I, th- I think, both in the Democrat Party and just in politics in general in Pennsylvania, and that's not who these people wanted. You know, in the same way that the GOP didn't want Trump in 2016 or 2020, these people don't really want John Fetterman, but he's won so much and won so dominantly that he's that he's that he has to be the nominee. Um, and when Mastriano, you know, I think he said a lot of controversial things in the past, you know, to, to kind of try to attach onto the Trump base. You know, Trump likes to hear the election fraud stuff, and his base does as well. That's why you see Oz McCormick kind of going the same route in terms of election fraud. Um, but I still think the Mastriano is going to have to try to appeal to moderates. They're going to have to try to appeal to the modern man in Pennsylvania, the modern, the modern day man or woman in Pennsylvania. Um, so I think you'll see him take a little bit of a more moderate stance in the general, just like you know, McCormick and Oz will try to try to take a more general election stance and a more modern stance when it's heading towards the general election against John Fetter. Any other surprises from primary day, Kenny, that caught you off guard? I know there was a couple of elections across the United States and a lot of the eyes were obviously focused there on Pennsylvania, but anything else that, that caught your eye? Uh, Massey Cawthorn getting beat was, was, was definitely one, you know, an inc- uh, incumbent congressman uh, two years, you know, he had a lot of controversy, a lot of the, the North Carolina establishment went after the dude. You know, it's, it's, it's fortunate and unfortunate. I think there's, there's two, two situations the GOP is viewing it as right now. I view it as unfortunate because I think he was awesome in Congress, you know, was advocating for eliminating departments like the DEA, the ATF, and things like that, um, was a very much of an anti-central intelligence guy, was a, you know, pretty against federal government intervention and wanted to eliminate the income tax. I mean, he was great great voting record wise. I realized he was a young guy, just 26 years old around my age. I think maybe a year older than me, like maybe he's 27 now. Um, 
So it's unfortunate, I think, for us. I think the GOP views it probably as a positive because he was very controversial, had a lot of controversies both on the Internet and uh, comments he made on some podcasts and things like that. So that, that part is unfortunate. Um, I personally liked Congressman Cawthorn. You know, it was a great representation in terms of us being young and, you know, young conservatism being a real thing. You know, his election proved that that's a good – that, uh, you know, young people could be involved in the GOP and could win. Um, but uh, it's just unfortunate. You know, I think a lot of con- controversy she surrounded him. Um, you know, I think the NC establishment targeted him. I think Washington establishment targeted him. And, and there's just so many targets that you can afford to have on your back before you get beat by the establishment. And I think, just think he gained too many. But I think he was anti-war. He was uh, anti-federal government. He was anti-tax. I mean, he was a really good congressman, uh, voting record-wise at least. But, you know, that one surprised me, but it didn't. You know, it was kind of predicted that he would probably lose with everybody in North Carolina going against him. And he's right next to me here in Collett County. I mean, Collett County, where I'm from, borders his district over on the North Carolina state line. Um, so I was hoping to see him succeed, but I'm not really surprised he got beat. Um, but to see just one term congressman get ousted in his primary or her primary is a surprising result always. You know, I thought that I think he only lost by like about uh, one or two percent, if that. So that was a little bit surprising, um, but not, not nothing too much. Um, I, I think there's been some. Uh, Upsets across the country with incumbents and primaries. I forget what the, that name was. I think somebody from Missouri. I think his name Schrader was a progressive, but upset an incumbent, an incumbent Democrat. Um, but not not a lot. I think the. Um, both the Georgia, the uh, the well, the North Carolina one was a little bit surprising in terms of Ted Budd beating uh, McCory by Pat McCormie by as by Pat McCory by as much as he did. Um, McCory was a former governor and a former former congressman. Um, you know I, that was a little bit of a surprise, but just about, about, about the margin more than anything. I don't think it's necessarily a surprise that Bud won. Bud was predicted to win, but definitely beating him by, I think, I think 20 or 30 points in that um, that senatorial primary was pretty significant. Um, and then, you know, Bud being probably the most right-wing politician in comparison to Tom Tillis and him replacing um, who he's going to replace. But I think that he is a, you know, he's going to be a, a libertarian and, you know, liberty-leaning Republican, and we need that in the Senate right now. You know, Rand Paul and... Um, Rand Paul and Mike Lee need some uh, need some aid. So I'm, I'm hoping that Oz and Herschel Walker in Georgia, who has his primary next week, all, all succeed because we, we we do definitely need some more Liberty Republicans in the U.S. Senate. <laughs> we need some more Liberty folk just in general. And and you know what? I know I'll get a lot of flack for this, and but you know Amash has a point when he points to people like Jared Polis over in Colorado, who you know yes he is a Democrat, but he has been easily much more you know in favor of libertarian small l libertarian policies than than we would see a lot of the other traditional governors um so in, in does that excuse him for what he did back with covid absolutely not and i abs- you know i i think we we have to make sure too going back to that issue we do have to continue to keep these uh these pro covid lockdown po- pro covid mandate governors to task for what they did regardless of p- uh, party affiliation um yeah it is it's just insane that we allow what happened to happen for two years. And, and, you know, I will say thank you that, to people who have stood up and are starting to change their minds, but yeah, I, I will take some, some wins wherever I can get them. I guess, you know, looking at somebody like Jared Paulus on the, the left, who you know is a little bit more libertarian leading and then obviously more Liberty warriors in the right. But uh, Kenny, before we go to our next topic of conversation, which yes, we're going to talk about this baby food shortage. First, I want to go ahead and make sure folks, if you don't have the chance to head over to Brian where you can go ahead and sign up for our morning sales huddle. Yeah. You can go ahead Get yours truly in your inbox once per week. And uh, when you do, uh, you'll go ahead and not only get uh, sales secrets and tips that yours truly use to help teach my sales team to their success, but I'll also send over a free copy of my ebook, Four Easy Steps You Can Implement Now to Help Sell Liberty to Friends and Family. That's over at briannicholshow.com. Make sure you go ahead and sign up today. Now, Kenny, let's go back to this baby food shortage. Um, it seemingly came out of no, uh, nowhere, but that's not true. It's been really uh, building up behind the scenes for uh, quite a few months now. And this really stems from Abbott being uh, forced to recall and, and shut down operations for a number of um, a number of weeks here because of some issue with some tainted baby food. Correct me if I'm wrong. So talk to us. What's going on here with this baby food shortage hitting America? 
Well, it, it's usually like with any product that usually has problems. You know, you see, you've seen it with chicken. You've seen it with you know other products that have salmonella and things like that. And the same thing is going on with baby formula coming over the border and uh, problems in Mexico, problems in the border, and problems with the imports. Um, but unfortunately, the solution that the Biden administration has proposed is let's throw some money at the FDA to see if they can solve the problem for us, which is the, really the problem with inflation or price gouging or anything in the first place. When we throw more money at a problem or throw more money at a federal department, it's supposed to automatically you know, fix things. And, and I, I just don't agree with that. I, I, I don't I don't see how that's going to help this solvency. You know, there's a shortage of baby formula right now. Do you know what I think the problem is, is that the senators and the GOP uh, and both the Democrat Party and the GOP, I'm not going to just demonize the GOP, but especially the GOP, people like Mitch McConnell and Susan Collins, who make trips over to the Ukraine uh, during their uh, little inter- interventionist obsession with the Ukrainian and Russian war, um, concentrating on doing things like that instead of opening up trade policy or proposing new ideas about, you know, getting in contact with some other countries through diplomacy and trade to actually get us some new baby for us so babies aren't starving and mothers aren't struggling, but instead our, our establishment in Washington is deciding to go make a trip to Ukraine out of nowhere to have a photo op of Vladimir Zelensky. And then the Biden administration, of course, wanting to uh, throw money at the FDA, you know, that, and I think the bill actually got passed, unfortunately, in the House, and I saw many good Republicans vote for it, unfortunately. I think they want some solvency, and I, and I get it, but, um, you know, in the same way that Rand Paul brought up a, uh, you know, a, an opposition to the unanimous Ukrainian aid bill, I wish there would have been some Republicans that would have offered some amendments or some oversight about actually how the money's going to be used that we're giving to the FDA. Um, the thing that needs to be done more than anything else is there's some diplomacy and is the opening up of trade. With, with countries in Europe or even in Canada or how, or what have you, wherever we need to get it from and actually have some conversations about how much inflation is impacting our country and others and see if there's anybody who would be willing to trade with us in a time of need. But no, that, that's not there. That's not the solvency here. You know, we're going to throw more money at the useless FDA, just like we threw money at the CDC, just like we threw money at the ATF to solve, uh, you know, our arms deals, our problems, you know, problems in gun control, our problems in, you know, gun death, our problems in drugs with the DEA. Let's just throw some more money at federal departments and see what happens. That's the solvency that most Democrats and unfortunate Republicans are coming up with this issue. But this just proves that there's a uniparty really in Washington, and uh, we need to elect more Republicans that actually care about fiscal responsibility and actually solving problems rather than just throwing money needlessly. Now, despite the fact check from uh, Reuters that Bill Gates' investment in lab-produced breast milk company is unrelated to baby formula shortage contrary to posts online. Now, I don't have my tinfoil hat on. I actually have my good ideas don't require force hat, which you can find over at briannicholshow.com forward slash shop. But if I were to take this hat off and put my tinfoil hat on and you look at, you know, with this plus what's happening now, plus to your point, just the fact that we have so many barriers in place to actually get other formula and other baby food from other places. And then also you look at like Facebook and Facebook is censoring formulas and recipes from the 60s from your grandparents on what they used to feed their children because one of the ingredients which is caro syrup was a questioned ingredient because now they use corn syrup which kenny caro syrup is is a form of corn syrup so they're they're fact checking a, a very minute detail and and again no tinfoil hat on right now but i mean it's Come a little on. weird no, it's very, it's very weird. It seems like when there's any private consultation or any private commentary on solutions, the government wants to silence it. The corporate arm of the government wants to silence it. They want to make sure, oh, we know what the problem is. So unless it's a government solution or unless it's the politicians in Washington letting you know what the solvency is going to be, don't try to come up with your own ideas and don't try to come up with your own solutions. Don't look back how we used to do it when private people and private citizens actually offered solvency to the government and solvency to private corporations and private businesses to help help people no let it always be the corporate approved and the government approved solutions never think for yourself and never think of your own solutions just make sure that it's the actual government and the government officials the cdc the fda or what have you that comes up and tells you how to solve the problems that the government made themselves make sure it's always the government making problems and solving them for themselves but the private privacy and the private citizen cannot make their own solutions it's a joke ryan you know people like bill gates who have our arm and arm of the Biden administration, people like 
you know, CNN, the media corporations such as CNN, even Fox News, uh, people like, like like Chris Wallace that were on Fox News, you know, the MSNBC, uh, the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos. Um, people like that are supposed to tell you how to solve problems. Don't do it for yourself. Do what the government tells you to do. That's the idea that our government has. They don't care if what, what private citizens come up with. They don't care that Elon Musk is offering to offer a private corporation like Twitter to actually have solency in promoting free speech and against censorship the same way they want to censor private solutions like they have censored on Facebook or like they have censored on other social media and saying it's a dangerous thing, even though it's been proven that it's not dangerous. It's a corporate arm again. You know, I've appeared on your show before talking about the corporate arm of the federal government wanting to silence critics and silence uh, private speech and private solutions. And we're just seeing that again, unfortunately. We really need to elect more Liberty Republicans. I know that's always the message that I promote on here, um, but we need to, we need to elect more liberty-centered people so this kind of legislation, this kind of silencing of private solutions are not being done. Kenny Cody, it's like you listened to our episode yesterday with Caleb Franz, where we talked about the very long history of misinformation here in the United States and yeah, how it's not a new thing and actually it's been used and weaponized by government many a time over history. This is just another iteration of a said government using its big old club to force what it considers to be the truth, right? What is considered fact versus fiction through. So yeah, this uh, this is not a new conversation. It's just another chapter in this very, very long, miserable and tiresome book. And hopefully we're going to be getting uh, towards some, some better prospects here moving forward with, yes, like you mentioned, the advent of Elon Musk taking over Twitter and fingers crossed, turning it into a uh, a free speech haven, and you have, yes, some Liberty Republicans, and hopefully hopefully we can get a, a bunch of them swept into office here in November 2022. So uh, with that being said, yes, we have a lot to look forward to, and obviously, Kenny, you're leading the charge in keeping folks educated, enlightened, and informed in terms of what's happening on the ground in uh, the greater GOP political world. Talk to us. Where can folks go ahead and continue the conversation with you and also find all the great stuff you're writing? Well, I usually, I usually uh, promote all of my articles on my Twitter account, on my Facebook account, on my Instagram account. So just type in Kenny Cody on Facebook or Instagram. You'll probably find me. At Twitter is right below. I'm my name tag right there. Uh, at KD Cody TN. Uh, probably all my archives, a lot of my articles and things like that are right over at Newsmax at Town Hall. So you can probably find my profiles on there. But if you want to see an archive of all my articles that I've ever written, uh, you can go to muckrack.com uh, and just uh, search for my name, Kenny Cody, and you'll be able to find over 40 articles that I've written over the last three years about any any subject that you're interested in. I probably wrote about it in the political sphere. Uh, so uh, keep on following people like Brian. Uh, you can follow people like me. Just follow Liberty people, whether they're in the Libertarian Party, the GOP, and maybe the, the uh, Democratic Party. Follow Liberty Sino people and make sure that you keep up with them and we can win. Yeah, and, and by the way, when I was talking about, you know, looking for those those folks in the left who are Liberty-leaning, yeah, I know. I know there's like six of them. I get it. But like <laughs> – I'll take those six who are open-minded and also I'll take those individuals who have been abandoned by their, their political parties, both on the left yeah. and the right. I will take those, those questioning open individuals and say, fear no more. We have alternative solutions that we are bringing to the table. And Kenny, yes, while we are talking about the political conversation here, we also promote those overtly non-political solutions that will help create real solutions out there for people to say, oh, this is just a great idea. And I don't have to use state to, to get this enacted. It's just great ideas that normal people can go ahead and get into action on their own. So uh, yes, that's what we're trying to do here at the Brian Nichols Show. And folks, yes, if you enjoyed today's episode, well, you can go back and check out 500 plus episodes we have here on the program. And you'll find a bunch of different solutions that are being raised up all across the board. So uh, make sure you head over to briannicholsshow.com. Check those out. And oh, by the way, you can check out all the other episodes that Kenny Cody has been joining us here on. But with that being said, Kenny, any final thoughts here for the audience today? Keep up with this PA Senate race. It does matter. Keep up with all elections. They do matter. And make sure that you are prioritizing, promoting Liberty Center people like Brian and myself. There you go. All right, folks. Well, I'll leave you with this. If you missed yesterday's episode with Caleb Franz, where, yes, we did talk about misinformation. No worries. I'll include that video right here below. It should pop up anytime now here on the YouTube. But for you audio listener, make sure you go ahead to briannicholshow.com and you can check out that episode. But with that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Kenny Cody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.